In our next example here with sound wave interference, we're going to look at a situation just like the previous video. We have two oscillators right here, which put out a frequency of sound. In this case, it's going to be 400 hertz, and the geometry is the same. They're two meters apart. Uh, they are in sync, meaning that the, um, the wave coming out of the oscillators is at the same amplitude at the same time with the same frequency. And then when they come together here, there's going to be a phase difference. And we're going to try and figure out what the phase difference is. So let's call phi the phase difference. And we're trying to figure out what that is equal to. Well, if we have two waves, uh, let's say that the velocity of sound is equal to 340 meters per second. So let's figure out the wavelength of those waves, those sound waves. And um, so we have velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. So the wavelength is equal to the velocity divided by the frequency. That would be 340 meters per second divided by 400 hertz. And that'll give us a wavelength in meters. Let's find out. Here's our calculator. So we have uh, 340 divided by 400 equals 85 centimeters or 0 0.85 meters. Okay, so now let's say what the phase difference, what the, the um, travel distance is. What is the extra distance that the sound waves coming from this oscillator have to travel compared to the sound waves coming from this oscillator? So this is a triangle and this is two meters and that's four meters. The hypotenuse can easily be calculated using Pythagorean theorem to be 4.47 meters. So the extra distance traveled by the wave coming from the top oscillator is going to be equal to 4.47 meters minus the 4 meters traveled by the wave coming out of this oscillator, 4 meters. So that is equal to 0 0.47 meters, and that is the phase difference. That is equal to phi. Now, how much is that in terms of wavelengths? So we know that the wavelength is equal to 0.85 meters, so what fraction of a wavelength is that? So phi is equal to uh, a wavelength times the ratio of the extra distance traveled in meters divided by the length of a wavelength. So this would be 0 0.47 meters divided by 0 0.85 meters. So it's simply the ratio of what the extra distance is divided by the length of a wavelength. And that will be the fraction of a wavelength that this wave will have to travel farther than this wave. So remember, these are sound waves traveling in this direction, the sound wave travel in this direction, and so they're going to meet here and they're going to be out of phase, they're not going to be in sync. All right, what is that equal to? So um, we have 0.47 divided by 0.85 equals, and it looks like it's 0 0.553 wavelengths. So since it's not exactly a half a wavelength where they would be completely destructively interfered with, or it's not exactly a whole wavelength so that they will be back in phase and there would be no destructive interference at all. It's somewhere in between. So what would be the result of that? So it's not complete destructive interference and it's not complete constructive interference. Well, what we can do is we can go ahead and figure out how many radians that is. So remember, a wavelength is 2 pi radians, so this can be 2 pi divided by lambda. So this will convert the fraction of the wavelength into the number of radians that were out of phase. So times 2 times pi uh, equals, and that is 3.47 radians. And then if we go and calculate the number of degrees that is, so that's equal to um, um, times 180. Uh, yep, it's 80 divided by pi divided by pi equals, and that's 199 degrees. Okay, so now we know the phase difference because the extra path length that this wave has to travel compared to that wave. So now if we go to our equation that we used before, this is the equation we used for strings, but actually applies for sound waves as well. This here represents the amplitude of the wave when the two come together. Remember, when they're a half a wavelength out of phase, the amplitude would be zero. When they're exactly in phase again, then the amplitude would be twice the amplitude of a single wave. So it all depends upon the cosine of half the phase difference. So therefore, we can say that the amplitude um, of this wave, when they meet together right here, is going to be equal to two times the amplitude of a single wave times the cosine of one half the phase difference, so one half 
of 199 degrees. All right, so let's figure that out. So we have 199 degrees divided by 2. So we're trying to find the cosine of 99.5 degrees. When we take the cosine of that, we get minus 0.16. So it doesn't matter, of course, it's negative or positive. We just want to know the, the uh, positive value of that. So that means that the amplitude of this wave, when the two come together, because of the, and I forgot the m here, because of the interference between the waves equal to two times the original amplitude times 0 0.165. And if we then multiply the times two, we get a difference in the amplitude of 0 0.331 of the original amplitude. So that's how you can figure out the interference of two waves in such a way that they don't come together uh, with a phase difference of exactly a half wavelength or exactly a full wavelength, somewhere in between, you can still figure out the amplitude of that wave when they meet. And that's how you solve for wave interference with sound waves.